Heavenly Father, we ask the blessing and the reading of your word. May your Holy Spirit be our guide today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're in John 5. We know from reading yesterday that uh, the leaders of Israel, they were missing hearing from God. Uh, really, it had become a situation where they thought they could be saved by keeping the law. And there was a self-righteousness. And there's a self-righteousness when people think they are good enough to keep the law. There's only been one person who kept the law perfectly, and that is Jesus Christ. And he's the only one that could. He's the only begotten of the Father. He's the only one uh, who was given and uh, born of a virgin, as Scripture was prophesied. And he's the only one who is able to save to the uttermost because he's God. He was there in the beginning, and he's the only one who could. Now, John 5, 39, Jesus says, to them. He says, search the scriptures for in them, you think ye have eternal life and they are they which testify of me. The whole Bible is about Jesus. You can go back to Genesis three fifteen. It says, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. And it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now people will have a problem with that word it there because they think, oh, well, that's calling God an it. It's calling the seed, it, and that is proper grammar. But it is referring to Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ would come from the seed of the woman, Israel. And from that, this, this Genesis 3.15 gives us the first part of the gospel that it shall bruise thy head. Well, a head wound is a fatal wound. And Jesus destroyed death, hell. He destroyed the devil. He has the ability, he's going to one day cast Satan into a pit for a thousand years. Then he'll be loosed for a time. But then in the end, he'll put him uh, in hell for all eternity. And it says, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Well, Jesus was, he did die on the cross, but it wasn't final because he rose again, showing that he is God. And the whole of scripture, we can go back to Genesis. We can see where Abraham, uh, God said to him, God will provide himself a lamb. And that is a picture of Jesus Christ there. God will provide himself a lamb. We see in John where he says, behold, the lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, that Jesus was the spotless lamb. On that same spot where Isaac was going to sacrifice Abraham is where the spotless son of God gave his life for any and all who would believe in him. Well, here, search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. They are they which testify me, and ye will not come to me that ye might have life. The leaders of Israel were rejecting the Lord, and they wouldn't come. And over and over, we see that with the nation of Israel. We saw it again after this in Acts, in the book of Acts, uh, when they consented and had Stephen stoned, we saw the Apostle Paul. He actually consented to the death of Stephen. But it says, then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. You know, we can have uh, we have a free will. We can make a conscious choice to block out the word of God. And many people do that. And again, I would tell you, if there's if your conscience is speaking to you because the law is coming to your conscience and the Holy Spirit is telling you you need to get right with the Lord, listen. Have a soft heart. Don't stop up your ears. Listen to it. You know, stop the video right now. Call out to him. Uh, if you've never been saved, you can ask him to save you. You can ask him uh, to forgive you of your sin. The blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse you from all sin. And, uh, but it says, ye will not come to me that you might have life. Don't be, don't be in that group. Be in the group that is looking at the scripture and finds Jesus and says, I'm going to accept him. But Luke 24, 27, another favorite of mine. And I know I've used this, uh, at many different times, uh, as a teacher, you know, I, I see the importance, you know, I've, I've taught high school for 30 years and, there is an importance to repeating things. Kids don't hear it many times the first time. There's very few kids that will hear it the first time. So I, I 
believe it is a, a very good teaching technique for the Bible as well. We need to hear things over and over because we tend to forget them. But Luke 24, 27, which I've used various times, especially in the last year, it says, And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. When Jesus taught his disciples, he showed them that, you know, everything, you can go back to Moses, and which would be referring to the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, that we can see a whole bunch of things uh, about Jesus in there because it's all about him. Uh, when they gave sacrifice, the, the sacrifice was all to point to Jesus. It was all supposed to point to uh, sinless sacrifice that would one day come. None of those sacrifices could put away sin, but his sacrifice could. And all the prophets, of what the prophets spoke, you know, were holy men of God in times past that they spoke as the Spirit moved them. And it was all to point to the fact that God would provide a Messiah, that he himself would be the spotless lamb who would take away the sin of the world. So um, verse 41, Jesus says, I receive not honor from men, but I know you that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my father's name and you receive me not. You know, the leaders of the people of Israel were rejecting him. They wouldn't believe him even for the miracles that he did. Um, but then what does he say next? He says, if another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. Now, who's he speaking of? He's speaking of the Antichrist. That uh, many people, they want somebody who has a name for himself. They don't want the name above all names. They don't want Jesus. Now, a lot of people don't have the problem problems with the name Jesus, but the name Jesus as referred to as the one who's going to judge sin, that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, they do have a problem with that. You know, but they'll receive another one who comes in his own name. There's going to be many people who are deceived by the Antichrist. And that's the importance of why we're looking into Scripture, because we want to search it. We want to know the real Jesus. We want to know who he is. Verse 44, how can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Now, see, a lot of people are in, uh, they're in pastoral positions. They're in places of leadership because they want the honor. You know, if, if we're doing it for our own glory and our own honor, then we're in it for the wrong reason. It needs to be to the glory of God and all things that are done uh, without him, they're, they're going to come to nothing anyway. They're not going to, they're not going to mean anything because if they're done without him, uh, unless the Lord builds the house, the worker's labor is in vain. It needs to be the work of God and uh, seeking honor one of another uh, people that are in position because they want the position they want to receive that uh, that's going to be a wrong position and the pharisees and the sadducees they were they were in that position that they wanted the honor because it says in matthew 23 5 it says but all their works they do for to be seen of men they make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments you get a lot of religious leaders that are like the pharisees they would they would have all this uh the different uh, ornaments and things on their robes that showed their uh, degrees and such. And a lot of people get caught up into degrees. You know, the people that changed the world were these uh, uneducated fishermen who had the Spirit of God in them. And the importance is to remember that God sees the heart. You know, when he spoke and uh, Nathan, the prophet, uh, excuse me, not Nathan the prophet. Nathan was the prophet who worked with David. But Samuel, when Samuel anointed David, you know, he reminded us all that God sees the heart. That man looks on the outward appearance. He looks on that. But the Lord sees the heart. So we can have a lot of things that point to point people to making them uh, think we're these super duper Christians and it doesn't do any good. 
you know, the more ornaments and things that we have, you know, it's not going to make up for what's not in the heart. So we want to make sure that our heart is right with the Lord and not just worry about the outward appearance, which, uh, you know, many people still do today. Verse 45 says, do not think that I will accuse you to the father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom you trust. Now, what's he talking about? He's talking about the law. The moral law was given to Moses. And when we go through the Ten Commandments, the Bible says, uh, by the law is the knowledge of sin. Paul said, I would not have known sin, but by the law. The reason for the law was not to save. The reason for the law was, it. the Bible says, the law is our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ so that we might be justified by faith. So the law's purpose is to drive us to the foot of the cross, and it cannot take us any farther than that. Verse 46, for had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. What's he talking about there? Well, had you believed that you couldn't live by the law? I mean, when Moses came down from the mountain with the Ten Commandments the first time, he saw the nation of Israel in sin, and he smashed them on the ground. And I that is an important picture for us. We as mankind couldn't keep the law. And James 2.10 says for to offend in one point of law makes us guilty of all. So if we've broken it in one place, it's shattered to pieces. And there goes the opportunity for earning it. And if you've ever just told one lie, it's already gone. And who's just told one out there? And some people, I talk to people and I ask them if they've ever stolen something. And that is a hard one for people to admit. And I want you to, right now, if I was asking you face to face, have you ever stolen something? And you say, well, no, I don't think I have. That is my least favorite answer when I talk to people. And I I do my best not to get angry. I'm going to be a little more angry right now because I'm not talking to anybody. But, uh, you know, if you've told a lie, you stole the truth from somebody. So you've already broken that law. You've stolen the truth. And you're now a thief. You're a liar and a thief. And, you know, um, I remember as a kid uh, taking something that wasn't mine. You know, it could have been something small, a quarter from your mom's purse. One of my friends, when I bring that up, she it always gives her a... Uh, a chuckle when I bring that one up, not because she's laughing at uh, stealing. It's just, she likes the analogy. So it always makes me smile thinking about her, but you know, we've all violated God's laws, you know, to look with lust is to commit adultery, to be, um, to have hatred in our heart is to be a murderer, you know, and if we're honest, we've hated somebody in our life. We've been angry to the point where we felt hate. And that shows we're a murderer at heart. We don't have to have committed the act. The whole of the Ten Commandments falls apart when you look at it because it's a violation either in truth, where you've actually done it, or in spirit of the law. And we've all violated it in spirit. No, I've never physically murdered somebody, but in my heart, I've held hatred in, in my life. And God sees that as murder, and that's how fine he is going to look at the Ten Commandments for those that think they can make it. If we would believe Moses, then we believe in Jesus. Because if we would believe Moses that the law condemns us, then we'll run to the Savior. Verse 47, but if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? You know, it is so important that we understand the purpose of the law. Now, Romans 9.30 says, What shall we say then that the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith? See, righteousness comes by faith. It doesn't come by hearing the law. Romans 9.31, But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained the law of righteousness. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at the stumbling stone. See, they were given the law. They were given the prophets. They had all these advantages, but they didn't seek it by faith. They, they thought they could be saved by the works of the law. And you were never able to be saved by the works of the law. As it is written, behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense. And whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And again, there it is. What John teaches us over and over, it's belief on him. And we have to have the right Jesus. We have to have the Jesus that will one day judge the Jesus that lived a perfect life. He's the only one who lived a perfect life, but whosoever believeth on him 
shall not be ashamed. If you see that you've, you know, broken his law, then you can run to the Savior. And he's the Savior who's willing to forgive all your sin. And it's simple as putting your trust in him. And he will give you ever forgiveness of sin, fellowship with God. He'll give you everlasting life. It does come with a cost. You know, the Bible does say that we're promised not happy, healthy, wealthy lives, as many would preach. Actually, we're promised trials, temptation, tribulation, persecution, but we are promised eternal life. And he, I'm going to tell you, it's worth it. Put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ today if you have not. Otherwise, if you have, share the person that you've put your trust in because salvation is in a person and it's in Jesus Christ. Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. It's not a church. 